Well, I think, in a way, certainly we have to celebrate human rights defenders, but it would be unfair to actually ascribe any success to any one particular defender. I think the, the recognition really has to go to the, collect, the collectivity of, of human rights actors and human rights defenders. Uh, I would point to a number of organizations and individuals within organizations that have worked together to promote certain issues uh, over time that have met with some successes. Uh, one issue in particular that I think uh, has been a very important one in the region is the problem of honor killings, for example, which is the, uh, the killing uh, of women for reasons of protecting family honor, which is prevalent uh, in a number of countries, not everywhere, but in a number of countries in the region. Uh, in Palestine, for example, the Women's Center for Legal Aid and Counsel succeeded in uh, having the Palestinian Authority pass legislation to criminalize honor killings. Uh, in Jordan, the Nizan Center for Human Rights and a number of other organizations worked very hard to uh, take away the mitigating ruling uh, in judgments that if a murder is committed in the name of honor, then that mitigates the crime. Uh, and at the same time, the government had had the practice to, to protect women from the possible crime committed against them for reasons of honor, they would put them in prison as protection. So, and the Zan Center for Human Rights uh, actually established shelters and came to an agreement with the government to actually take these women out of prison, put them in protective custody in a different way where they can have some decent lives, and kind of began work on retraining them so that they can actually become independent for fear that if they returned, the family, they could be harmed as well. Uh, and there's a number of other uh, uh, organizations and uh, uh, defenders who are working on discrimination issues along those lines that one can point to. The list goes on. And certainly, the, the primary obligation for the protection of rights is on states. It's not on civil society. The state has to make sure this legislation is, is correct, wow. that this legislation protects people against discrimination, that it clearly prohibits discrimination. Uh, and it has to put in the kinds of systems and structures that can implement this, uh, which means, you know, at all levels, from the, not only the legislative level, but at the judicial level as well, that judges are very aware of, of uh, what the implications of discrimination are when they pass judgments in cases. Uh, and you have to have also the, the constant lobbying of civil society to make sure that the, that the state uh, you know, performs that function, fulfills these obligations. One last element I would add is that, as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the growing establishment of national human rights institutions. National institutions play an important part when the state decides to establish as a state institution, not as an NGO, uh, and in an independent manner, a watchdog body to receive complaints from citizens, to point out to officials, to be able to have access to files in various ministries, to investigate, to make recommendations to parliament or to the executive authority. Uh, that's a very important effort. We're seeing that growing in the region. I think this is one of the uh, good ways that a state can fulfill its obligations.